Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Jack Cush. Jack's a professor of medicine and rheumatology at Baylor University Medical Center and director of clinical rheumatology at Bay Baylor Research Institute in Dallas. Um, he's, uh, he did his fellowship at the University of Texas in Dallas. He was voted one of te Texas da uh, super doctors and best doctors in Dallas. And as we all know, he's a phenomenal uh, rheumatologist, and he's going to talk today on the safety of biologics and new non-biologics in RA. Be here. Um, I want to start off with a big flag, a bigger flag. Um, <laughs> um, we do things big in Texas and also in the United States. Um, uh, you can, I, I try to, uh, I'm involved in Twitter, so if anybody likes to do Twitter, follow me at Room Now and you'll see some interesting things. I'm not telling you about when I'm taking a coffee break. I actually have some interesting stuff about rheumatology. Um, my, my disclosures are in your handout. Just recognize that I uh, have worked as an investigator and consultant to the companies who make the products about which I'm going to trash. Um, no, I'm talking about safety, and safety is important to us because we use these drugs. And we think we've got, certainly entered into a new exciting era, as Eddie just told you, in rheumatology where, you know, great things have happened. But, you know, you always want to know along the way, am I doing the right thing? Is there something I need to know? Is, is there something else I need to do to make what I'm doing safe? And this is unfortunately when uh, you talk about uh, these drugs, you know, you can't talk about oh, this stuff down here. This is what patients focus on. In their mind, you know, the two-page, three-page handout, Number 19 is as important as number four on that thing they get from Walgreens, and they're just wigged out about everything. And so, you know, safety is a big issue, but you need to remind your patients that the 800-pound gorilla in the room, or 800-pound Godzilla in the room, is rheumatoid arthritis. And it will squash them, kill them, make them die early and whatnot. And if they want to get focused on the menial things, this lymphoma down here, which is a speck that someone just stepped on, and this little thing called as serious infectious events, by contrast, again, one in 1,000, one in 100 events, that's, you can do that, but put it, always put it in perspective. Otherwise, patients are confusing this issue. So we'll talk about the things that are on their minds and the things that are on your minds. You know, this is the spectrum. There are nine currently approved biologics shown on, uh, on the top. I threw in tofacitinib. It's not a biologic. It's an oral DMARD. Um, and, and, and it's a small molecule and whatnot, but still it's new, and I think we need to talk about its safety, uh, especially as it relates to the drugs um, it's up against these days. So what we need to know is that certainly infection is important. It's maybe the second most common cause of death in almost all studies that I've looked at, and as high as 25% of deaths are due to infection. Um, and you need to know that pneumonia is, an, is the number one cause of infectious death in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. I'm going to always use pretty much rheumatoid arthritis as the surrogate for inflammatory arthritis today. And I'm also going to talk a lot about TNF inhibitors when I'm talking about biologics because that's where the best data has been, uh, has been dug up, analyzed, reanalyzed, and represented. So that's where the best data exists. And where I have good data on the other ones, I will show that. Uh, again, I, I think there's a lot of issues here uh, that in, in, are not just concerning, but there's a lot of misinformation and misdirection that people are given with regard to infectious issues, and I hope that I can clarify some of those today. And you need to clear, clearly point out to your patients that DTC is not the sole source of information. It's not even right most of the time. It's actually all about what they have to say from a regulatory standpoint. Uh, and I, but everyone believes that these drugs cause infection because that's one of the predominant messages that are on the biologic uh, ads that are on TV. I'm going to give you some um, um, bottom line things that you need to um, we'll start out with. Uh, and these are not in your handouts. I sort of added them. Number one, RA activity is the strongest predictor of serious infectious events, SIEs, um, and meaning that uh, inflammation drives risk. Inflammation drives risk. It's the most important one out there. It, uh, it outshadows everything, even cytoxan, okay? Um, number two, SIE risk is increased by a number of different things. And at the top of the list, it, it, it should be steroids. I don't know where I, I dropped that off. But at the top of the list is steroids, almost in any dose. Okay? And that's very, very important. And is, there is a dose-related effect. Second is comorbidities. And highest amongst that are the chronic lung dis disorders. Patients with COPD and interstitial lung disease and BOOP, et cetera. These are the ones who really get in trouble, who get the pneumonia and who die. Age is a risk factor. Major surgery, opening up a body cavity, your number one barrier against infection is the skin. So, uh, uh, you know, compromising that will lead to higher rates of infection. Higher doses of biologics, especially in the, and, and in all, in all biologics, the risk of infection is always greater.